If someone asks me the same question on the main road, maybe I would answer him. As for this matter, friends who live alone should be cautious when listening. Molly graduated from university in 2014 and stayed in Dalian for work after graduation. During that time, she encountered some difficulties, struggling to make ends meet and unable to afford the rent. Luckily, when Molly was in university, she had a close friend named Grace. Grace is from Dalian but went to Seju after graduation. She has a house in Seju and she is also an only child. Her parents followed her to Seju, so the house in Dalian became vacant. After learning about Molly's situation, Grace discussed with her parents and decided to let Molly take care of the house. The intention was for Molly to live there without paying rent, and in return, she would help them look after the house. Of course, Molly understood their kind gesture and didn't refuse. After moving in, Molly found that it was an old house, but it was well decorated, spacious, and clean. At that time, Molly was working at an insurance company and had a lunch provided by the company. After finishing the meal, she would pack up the leftovers as her dinner. So, besides the bathroom and bedroom, she didn't touch anything else in the house to avoid causing troubles. However, one day during lunchtime, Molly didn't have an appetite to eat. When it was nighttime, she became extremely hungry. After some thought, she looked out the window and noticed that the little supermarket was still open. She decided to go downstairs and buy some instant noodles. It was already around 11 p.m. When she returned after buying the instant noodles, as she passed by the building downstairs, she suddenly heard a voice calling out to her. Hey, miss, hey. She quickly turned around, but there was no one behind her. She looked ahead, and still, no one was there. There was no one in the hallway either. She searched around, but the voice didn't stop. Suddenly, she felt someone blowing air on the back of her foot. Startled, she looked down and to her surprise, there was a half-basement in the building with a small window that had railings. There was a man with his face squeezed between the railings, gripping them with his hands, and shouting from inside. Miss, are you selling insurance? Molly was completely bewildered at that moment. Although she sold insurance, this definitely didn't seem like a client. She didn't answer and just ran back home. In the early hours of the morning, around 1 a.m., Molly was suddenly awakened by a rapid series of hello sounds. She realized it was the doorbell, the kind where someone presses it and it says hello, please open the door. But the person outside was continuously pressing it, causing it to sound like hello, 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 hello. To be honest, it was the first time Molly had heard this doorbell at her house. She got up to check the front door but found no one there. No one at the doorstep. 
She thought maybe someone was drunk and had entered the wrong house, as such thing had never happened before. But from that day, every night at midnight, someone would come and press that doorbell. However, she couldn't tell Grace about this matter. It would make her seem paranoid and ungrateful since she was living in the house rent-free. She told a colleague at work about it, and the colleague said, Are you silly? That's your own doorbell. Why don't you just remove the batteries? Molly felt she is so silly. Yes, why didn't I remove the batteries? That evening, after finishing dinner, she started examining her doorbell. Finally, she found the battery compartment. When she unscrewed it, she discovered it was empty. She tried to come up with various reasons. Maybe it was the neighbor's door, so she went to the neighbor's door, pressed their doorbell, but it didn't ring, and no one answered the door when knocked. Later, she found out that there was no one living opposite her. She was on the top floor, the sixth floor, and the sound from downstairs seemed too far away. Because every night, the doorbell sounded as if it was right next to her ear. Unable to help herself, she began to overthink. That evening, she found an internet cafe and planned to spend the night there since it was close to her workplace. But after playing for a while, at around 1 a.m., she ended up falling asleep on the sofa, unaware of what was happening. While sleeping, she suddenly felt an uncomfortable sensation of coldness on her forehead, which woke her up. As she woke up, she realized that the environment she was in wasn't actually safe. There were several shirtless men nearby playing games, giving her occasional side glances. Realizing it was already 3 a.m., she thought to herself, The doorbell must have finished ringing by now. I should go back and sleep. It's better not to stay here. She got up to leave but felt like something was missing. At that moment, the shirtless men from before suddenly said to her, Hey, miss. Subconsciously feeling that something was wrong, she started running, and the men didn't chase after her. When she returned to her apartment building, she climbed the stairs and reached the fifth floor, just one more floor to their top floor, the sixth floor. Suddenly, she saw a shiny keychain on the ground. It was her keychain. She didn't want the bad guys to pick up her keys. If something went missing from her house, it would be a problem. She quickly picked it up and hurried upstairs. When she opened the door, she felt a bit confused. She always locked the door from the outside, but this time, for some reason, the lock only turned once. She couldn't remember why she forgot. She was too exhausted and her head was spinning. After opening the door, despite some hesitation, she still went inside to change her shoes. While changing her shoes, she caught a glimpse of a dust cover placed on the sofa. Slowly, it began to rise. At that moment, her heart raced, and she forgot to run. With her mouth wide open, she took an intense breath. Suddenly, from under the dust cover, a voice emerged. Hello, 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 hello. Then a man's voice followed, and the electronic sound continued. Are you selling insurance? The dust cover slowly fell, revealing the man who was inside the railing that night in the basement. He had a device resembling a doorbell in his hand, connected to a small speaker with wires. He was sitting there, smiling in the darkness, his hand continuously pressing. Hello, 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 hello. She turned around and ran, scrambling and crawling downstairs until she reached the police station. When the police heard the situation, they said, there's not much we can do about this person. He has mental disease and almost all the residents around here know about it. They say he used to be a wealthy businessman, but he was deceived by a female insurance seller, which left him penniless. 
People generally ignore him, and his story may not even be true. However, in your case, since he entered your home, we can't ignore it. They began the investigation, starting with the surveillance footage from the internet cafe. Molly witnessed a scene she would never forget. While she was asleep, a few guys came in and started playing games nearby. After a while, another man entered, the same man who asked her if she was selling insurance. He had a sly smile on his face as he sat next to her, staring at her. After observing her for a while, he moved behind her, and then he started breathing heavily on her forehead, like he was wiping something off with his breath. Then, he took out a paper-wrapped hammer from his bag. At that moment, the other guys playing games seemed to notice and shouted. What are you doing? He quickly put the hammer away and ran. But before leaving, he picked up a bunch of keys from Molly's seat. Then he returned to her home, dropped the keys on the fifth floor, closed the door, covered himself with the dust cover, and lay on the sofa, waiting for Molly to come back. When he asked, are you selling insurance? And if Molly answered, yes, I am, then the hammer probably would have fallen long on her. 